James Thomas, we're doing a series with St. Louis Community College. We're here at the Forest Park campus. Today we have Lindsay Fox, and your department is? I am the program director of the Respiratory Care Program. Tell us about the program. So we are currently an associate's degree in respiratory care, and it's 21-month program. There's a few uh, prereqs that students have to take, like anatomy, physiology courses, and then they are placed on a wait list. We don't have a wait list in our program and uh, typically never, ever do. Um, so generally students who apply start the next fall. Uh, we start every cohort in the fall semester each year. And it's 21 months. 21 months. Yes, so a little less than two years to then acquire the Associates in Applied Science degree in respiratory care. Uh, we are currently um, looking to get accredited. We are actually in the middle of accreditation with the COARC, which is the accreditation agency for respiratory care programs. And we are seeking accreditation for a bachelor's degree in respiratory care from this community college, hoping to start that here in the next few years. Also, because there's a shortage in that field, tell us about the expansion. Yes, the expansion is very important to our community and um, especially coming out of a respiratory pandemic. Respiratory therapists are a very, very important part of the healthcare team. They bring a high about amount of value to the patient care bedside. We are the ones directly assessing diagnosing, treating patients with cardiopulmonary disease and issues, just like COVID-19. So um, the lack of respiratory therapists in this area is what is really helping us to um, want to expand and have more graduates um, from respiratory therapy. So we will continue our associate's degree, which has a capacity of 24 students each year. And the new bachelor's program, we're hoping to have 16 extra students per year. So that um, is a really great addition of high quality respiratory therapists coming into the, uh, into the field. When you start talking about respiratory, we just came out of COVID. Do you think there's a shortage because of the fear of catching COVID like a lot of nurses did do. Right. Um, I don't I don't see that when I talk to my colleagues across the across the the board. I think a respiratory therapist goes into their field knowing that there's risk even before COVID-19. I think we understand risks of respiratory disease or any bloodborne pathogen disease that is a risk to our to our field and I believe that most people um, understand that and and recognize it and, and as, as long as they're safe while providing that care with the right PPE um, I think they feel confident in the, in taking care of their patients safely for themselves um, so I don't see it as that I see it as that we've always needed more respiratory therapists um, just more now than we ever had before because there all of a sudden was a great need for them but we've always needed them I just don't know if it was that obvious or evident that we needed them they're always been a very big part of the team but not many people know who we are um, because we're a smaller um, you know type of profession and and we are so specific into our field um, that a lot of people think that we're nurses but we are not we work very closely with nursing we're very similar to nursing um, however we work with a lot more technology um, life-saving equipment like ventilators I don't know if you heard on the news there about the the worry about not having enough ventilators right. Well, it wasn't just the machines that we were concerned about not having. It was also the people that know how to run them. Right. And it's respiratory therapists in our program. We actually have two different courses and labs for mechanical ventilation to teach our students how to, to initiate it, uh, adjust it, and wean the patient from that machine and, and possibly save their life. So I'm a first year student. What can I expect in my first three to four months? In the first three to four months, I tell my students that we are building a foundation. So we don't have clinical training in the first semester, actually, um, just so that we are here on campus the um, you know, about three days a week in the lecture and lab setting to really getting that very strong foundation of the basics and the theories that um, that we need to build upon as we move through the program they can have they have a lot of lab time every uh, week so that they get their hands on that on those devices and get those skills and that confidence so then by the time they start clinical their second semester they feel very confident and comfortable taking care of patients and what's the job market like once they get their associate degree it is amazing it is amazing and it always really has been but it's really amazing we have jobs 
it's about a 10% of decrease uh, or need uh, in this area of respiratory therapists. So there's jobs everywhere and most of the hospitals are actually hiring our students now while they're in the program as student respiratory therapists with a permit and then they continue on and get the job once they're credentialed after graduation. So I would say about 90% of our second year students who are graduated in May already are working in respiratory departments as we speak. So that is um, not the case, it had not been the case before. So they have great job demand, a one, a very, very competitive salary, um, probably starting anywhere from 25 to $28 an hour and also 10 to $15,000 sign-on bonuses. Uh, so it's, it's very good, it's a long career, I tell students that, and that you can go anywhere. It's a national board exam, so they can travel to any state in the United States and get a job like that. Not just out of high school, but people who are in their 30s, 40s, the same? I have a range right now in my very first year class that just started. I have 19 year olds, a couple of 19 year olds, and my um, students go up to 57 years old. And so they have, we have second career, we have a wonderful diverse group of wonderful uh, experiences, life experiences. Some, a lot of my students work in healthcare already. They're just looking to level up. They're already patient care techs, or they're already medical assistants, or EMTs um, have a, a good foundational, um, they have foundation, paramedics have a good foundation for respiratory care. So we see a lot of people choosing respiratory care that are already working in healthcare, and they're just looking to level up and, and grow. So it's not just the patient itself, there are devices that they actually work. Yes. Talk about the devices. I think that's what makes us a little bit um, special. I think that's our, what kind of our bread and butter. We are patient, directly involved with patient care, just as a nurse is. However, instead of taking care of two patients or a few patients every day in the same area every day, we're taking care of a variety of patients. I might have 20 patients I'm working with in a day. I might be going into an ICU and then going over to the floors. I might be in the neonatal ICU and then the pediatric ICU. So I still get patient touch but I get the addition of the technology. So we have a lot of technology in our program um, from very uh, basic respiratory care therapies like nebulizers and ways to provide um, medication all the way up to the life-saving devices like the mechanical ventilators. Those are very um, high pieces of, uh, high technology pieces of equipment. They're microprocessor controlled. They are, you know, very, lots of different modes and settings. And a lot of things that we teach our, our students are very advanced techniques on how to care for patients with advanced disease. The, the, what happened with COVID-19 patients is their lungs are really bad and it's easy to uh, ventilate somebody that has normal functioning healthy lungs. That doesn't take a lot of um, extra work on a ventilator's part or RT's part to work that ventilator but once you have a patient with really bad lungs you're starting to have to use unconventional methods of mechanical ventilation, some different modes and different settings. You start to prone them. Did you see in the news, you know, people would take their patients and put them on their stomach and, and have them lay on their stomach while they're intubated with a ventilator. And that's all to ensure that they get oxygenated and ventilated um, appropriately. So we're, we were doing very high uh, technology and very high acuity things with those patients. ECMO is another uh, piece of equipment that's kind of like a bypass machine mm -hmm. that you would see in a, a patient in the OR who's having like a cardio pulmonary or like a cardiac uh, surgery um, but it's it's kind of the same kind of device that is actually used in an ICU and respiratory therapists are the ones that can be the ones that are actually running that machine and that machine is again a life-saving machine so we have to uh, teach all of this um, bronchoscopies and chest tubes and all of these things that physicians are of course part of too but we're assisting the physicians. We are the ones at the bedside making suggestions. We are working with protocols. We are using respiratory driven protocols where we are the ones critically thinking at the bedside and really making the decisions on what's best for our patient. So there is a huge demand in the St. Louis market in the region and across the country for these type of people. Then. There's a huge demand across the country. There's a huge demand in St. Louis region. We have 
some of the best hospitals in the nation right here. Our students are so blessed. Their clinical education that they receive during this program is a major advantage of our program. They go to all of these hospitals and see the best of the best, and they're learning from the best of the best. And then most of them stay right here and become respiratory therapists. Wow. James Thomas, we've been talking with Lindsay Fox. St. Louis Community College here at Forest Park.